Regular meeting number 9-2007, Monday, June 4th, 2007. Roll call by the town clerk. Chairman McKinney. Here. Councillor Backer. Present. Councillor Dill. Councillor Lennon. Here. Councillor Lynch. Here. Councillor Rowe. Here. Councillor Swift Kayada. Here. Manager McGovern. Yep. Okay, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We will now move on to review of the minutes for May 7th and May 14th, 2007 meetings. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections? Mary Ann. Move acceptance. Of the minutes. Oh, okay. Second. Thank you. Ann. I had, I think, just one thing. Um, on um, the minutes for Monday, May 7th, um, on page two, the comments from Mr. Ely, the third line from the bottom, um, or no, I'm sorry, third line from the top of his comments. It said he noted that Cape Elizabeth spends the least per capita on its students than any other city or town in the state. I did not recall him saying that. I recalled him saying that for this area or for comparable towns in this area or for Cumberland County or something like that. So we may want to just check on that. That one, I, I'm not sure because I don't have the tape. So. I just wanted to. I, my, my recollection is he said among the least or among the lowest or something like that. I don't Maybe, said, maybe that was it. Because I, I, I don't think he's. Factually, I don't yeah. think it's correct, and I think he would have been correct. Didn't he read said. from a letter? May have. And, and I think so he, his. He did read what from what a he letter, read from was actually published in this week's Cape Courier. Okay. And is that. Was this comment from that letter? I thought he read from that letter. Okay. Then then it can be checked against so. that letter. I don't recall, I didn't see the letter, so. Well. I would suggest if we incorporate the letter. Oh, yeah. And then, I'm sorry, and then I had one on the meeting minutes for May 14th, page two, the top paragraph. Um, about a third of the way down it said, he said he did support the, it, it was under Councillor Backer's comments. He said he did support the municipal budget because it is within LD1 and below the CIP. I think it, uh, he said the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. Mm. The CIP is the capital improvement mm. plan. And, and also, I'm sorry, in Councillor McKenney's comments under that, uh, it said Councillor McKenney thinks that the council has been very thoughtful and conscious, consciences Conscientious. I think it's conscientious. It is. Thank you. So I would offer those as a friendly amendment or whatever. David? On the um, minutes of Monday, May 7, on page 6, under um, item number 79, I'm not quite sure how to describe Well, the paragraph right before item 80, that reads, ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approve items number 79 to 85, which includes the budgets for the, then it starts to list the various mm -hmm. uh, funds. Um, missing from that, and what should be the very first one before Riverside Cemetery Fund, should be sewer fund among yes. that list. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it should read sewer fund, comma, Riverside Cemetery Fund, et cetera. Right. And, and in fact, the, up at the top of the page where it says item 79, shouldn't that be s shifted down so that it comes right before item 80? Because we've got item 79, mm -hmm. then the motion to vote as a block, and then uh, mo moving all the items. It seems, it seems clearer to me to have 79 through 85 together. Basically, the first three lines mm -hmm. right. should be shifted and put right above item 80. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. 
I think what happened is we brought up item 79 and then the motion was made. And that's why it came out this way. Yeah, if I might, the standard practice, if you look at the minutes elsewhere, is that the introduction is at the top and the introduction was this draft motion. That's right. why it would appear there at the top where it, yeah, I think it, so if does, you look at the usual form that we do, this appears in the, the, the place that it usually would. So, it, so it's proper. Yeah, but you, but it might be repeated too above eight, item 80 to as well. Clear. To, for, yeah, but it, I, okay. it usually would appear there. It's at the top of 79. Okay. Any other corrections? Okay, all in favor of accepting the minutes as amended. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to a very special item. And I think I should probably move down there. They, they like the limelight. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, kids. Outstanding. Looks <laughs> like here, here's right. Here's right. Campbell, <laughs> 
Yeah. Pretty impressive that they'll all be here. It's impressive to see the size of the deer. No, the deer come to this tournament every year, and there are about 150 kids to get off the bus from Little Deer Island. I mean, I've tried to teach my kids chess. They can't even keep track of who gets what, what piece gets to do what. Deer Isle has won every year. My kids played on the team, and they would always finish second and third to Deer Isle. You're welcome. So Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> Make sure you share that trophy. <laughs> yeah, I know it's difficult. Okay. Chess team. Okay, let's move on to reports and correspondence. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share? Jim. I'd just like to... Uh, I formally thank uh, Jim Cox for the great job that he did in organizing the Memorial Day activities again this year. Uh, he has taken over right where Jimmy Murray left off, the late Jimmy Murray left off, and, and does a wonderful job every year bringing the veterans out and, and the people of the town out. It's a great, uh, great civic e event, and uh, I really appreciate it. Anybody else? Thank, thanks, Jim. I, I was, I mean, I think most of us were honored to uh, be part of that parade, and it was, it was a wonderful parade. And, he did a great job, and the kids from the middle school uh, band played, did a wonderful, wonderful job, and we had uh, all sorts of uh, young veterans from, you know, that had been all over the world as part of it. It was really nice. So, any, anything else anyone would like to share? Well, I want to share uh, one, one uh, piece of correspondence, just so that people are made aware of this. Um, presently. Uh, there is a bill that's moving through the legislature, and uh, it has to do with school consolidation. And it's a very important bill for us, and all of the counselors have weighed in at one time or another. And what the bill calls for is a um, consolidation program to bring various school districts together, school districts that have fewer than 2,500 students. And one of the recommendations presently is to combine Cape Elizabeth school system with South Portland. And on its face, that doesn't seem like a bad thing, but uh, necessarily. But the effect would be pretty severe for Cape Elizabeth because it would eliminate what we've worked so hard to achieve, a one-town concept where we share many personnel between the municipality and the school system. It would eliminate that outright. And it would increase costs because the school system has been so efficient in Cape Elizabeth. We would incur additional costs both on the municipal and on the school side. And the councilors have weighed in and uh, expressed their concern. And I just think it's important that the citizenry be aware of you know, that this um, piece of legislation is in the works. Okay. And if I might add, I would Please. urge people if they have views on this subject to contact their legislators because the le le legislature will be voting either this week or next on that matter. And the um, probably the easiest way to communicate with our delegation, Cynthia Dill, Representative Cynthia Dill, Representative Jane Eberly, and Senator Lynn Bromley, is that their names and email addresses, there are links right on the Cape Elizabeth website. And so if you have views one way or the other on um, the pluses or minuses of uh, merging our school system with South Portland, then I urge you to contact them. Thank you, Ann. Anybody else? OK. We will move on. Town manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, actually, I, I wrote it out again, and it's, it's sitting up in my printer, but I think I can remember most of it. I'll throw it in your boxes after the meeting. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Maureen O'Mara. Uh, on Friday, at a meeting of the Maine Association of Planners, she was elected the new president of the Maine Association of Planners, a, you know, a, a, an indication of the respect that she, is, uh, that she has in her profession within the state of Maine. And also, I think as another indication of that, uh, the Winnick Woods Master Plan that the Conservation Commission worked on uh, with Maureen and others, that was named the Plan of the Year by the Maine Association of Planners. And uh, I know the council worked, uh, had a couple of workshops on that, so it was nice to see that recognized. It was also nice that this weekend about 15 volunteers were actually 
on the Winnick Woods pro uh, property, and we're working on trails and other activities there. So uh, it shows that not only is, is the plan uh, a good plan, but uh, recognized as a good plan, it's, it's also being implemented. Also, uh, one to mention that we had our hazardous waste collection day uh, a couple weeks ago, and we had over 500 vehicles uh, went through on that Saturday, uh, going through the public works garage, depositing materials. And we really want to thank the citizens for responsibly handling that material by uh, taking advantage of that day, and uh, we appreciate their patience as well. While the line moved very quickly, uh, everyone likes to show up at the very beginning of it, and I. And I wasn't here that day, but I understand the traffic was backed up from the public works garage all the way back to the sewer treatment plant uh, down Spurwink at one point. So uh, it was uh, a very busy morning, but a very successful one in terms of that material uh, being properly disposed of. I uh, also want to mention the turf field is actively under construction. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to go down and see, but uh, even with, with even with the rain, it's and without the rain, it's the greenest grass in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, so anyway, that's that's looking good. Should be done in, in about three weeks. We also began work today on uh, the sewer replacement project on uh, Wood Road at Gel Geldart Lane, uh, and that should be you know depending again on the weather, it doesn't look too good this week, but that should be a, a, a project that goes goes by fairly quickly. Uh, Family Fun Day is coming up. There's been a good volunteer committee working on that. Uh, that's June 16th. There will be fireworks as well. Uh, the events start uh, with a parade and continue throughout the day and uh, should be uh, quite a good day. And we're also hosting once again the Fulton Symphony Orchestra on Friday night, June 29th uh, at Fort Williams Park. And that should you know, bring a lot of traffic uh, to Shore Road that folks should be ready for, but it's always a a great event. It's an independent pops concert, and uh, more information is available at the Portland Symphony dot org uh, website. So, anyway, uh, hope folks participate in that event. But it continues to be busy. Public Works finished their cleanup activities, and uh, that went well. And finally, I would like to mention uh, the police department. Some of you may have written, may have uh, read the. The police reports and a couple of the local news weeklies and uh, the police have been very active in going after underage drinking. Uh, they'd received a grant to help out with that and uh, over the last month there were over 20 arrests uh, for underage drinking in Cape Elizabeth and I, you know, if anyone looks at the newspaper they can see the different locations uh, but it's a very important issue in the community and I really appreciate the police department's efforts and uh, in addressing the issue and uh, in encouraging more responsible behavior. So, thank you. Thank you, Michael. That's excellent. Okay, now we move on to citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Would anybody like to make any comments on any particular item? Okay, on to item number 91, Hannaford Field Committee. Someone like to make a motion? But, but just oh, if Michael, I might, you what, want to introduce what happened with this is two options. One is an option A, one's an option B. Uh, one of the options is, is a charge for a new committee. Uh, it, it's in both, it changes the name to Hannaford Field. Uh, the second one merely amends the original charge to the turf committee, that's option B. Uh, they're both about the same. The council's willing, the council can Adopt A, B, or C, or D, uh, mm -hmm. whatever you'd like, if, or none, none at all. David? Um, I move that um, we adopt a, an amended and restated um, charge for the Turf Field Committee, um, consistent with option B, to uh, restate the, to rename the committee as the Hannaford Field Committee. Um, and to have the original committee um, can see this through to completion rather than sunset one committee and create a new one. Just to clarify, uh, David, with the one exception of the elected officials under this proposal would not be continuing from the old committee if their term of office had expired. That's my understanding of this draft. Correct. Yeah. Well, and I, of course, I didn't go through all the details of it, but 
mm. um, as presented in option B. Okay. Do, do we have a second on that motion, Ann? No, I'm not oh. seconding it. I'm, I, point of information. Yes. I'm unclear on the differences between A and B. Okay. I, I, and I don't know whether I want to uh, second anything or I, I read both of these carefully and I wasn't sure I understood the difference. So Michael, I would appreciate you want to elaborate uh, a little a more bit. detailed explanation of what is the practical difference between these two before, before I can decide if I want to second it or, or not. And if someone else wants to second it, whatever, but I'd appreciate an explanation because it wasn't clear to me. Do you have any clarification I, you'd like to make? Yeah, uh, I can provide a background. I had sent a draft out of this to the council about a week ago, mm -hmm. and I had responses from two councilors who had two totally different approaches. And rather than simply uh, giving you one, I decided to give you both. Uh, but in the end, they accomplish about the same thing. The first one says that the citizen member shall be from, that there shall be one from the Elizabeth Park neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, the second one says that it shall be a resident of a neighborhood in close geographic proximity to Hannaford Field. Uh, the, both of them provide that the town council and school board chairs would fill the elected slots on those different committees. Although the first one says it outright, the second one gives the option for any elected official who was serving on the committee to continue, although that there's only one person that that would apply to and that person has already indicated that they don't wish to continue to serve uh, the school board. That's my understanding, the school board chairman's already designated two other folks assuming one of these things would pass. Uh, the committee purposes are essentially the same. In both cases, it's proposed that they, the committee continue until 2008 unless its term is extended by the town council, though I had a typo and A in the word extended. And, uh, you know, that's, that's essentially it. I did attach to this the, the original charge to the original committee, and as you can see, there's, uh, you know, for the most part, what they had, what they had proposed had already been accomplished. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so that, you know, might be a factor in whether or not you want to go with A or B. So if I could just make sure, make sure I understand. The purpose is essentially the same for both. The duration of the committee is essentially the same for both. One says close geographic proximity to Hannaford Field. One says Elizabeth Park, somebody mm -hmm. from Elizabeth Park. Um, in terms of people continuing on, would we be re, um, would everybody be starting new with each one of these or would we be, we'd be carrying forward people on one of these and not carrying forward people on the other? B would continue the former members with the exception of the elected officials yes. who uh, no longer serve as elected officials. A would allow for a totally new appointment process. And you know, originally I had had in my drafts a, a prov provision that the, other pe that the people who were there before would be asked to continue in the drafting suggestion from the council who put together A that it was suggested that that be eliminated, so I, I eliminated So A is more of a start fresh new. A is and more B of a... Is continue with everybody who's on the committee except for the elected officials who have, yeah. you know, are no longer elected yeah. officials. You know, except for the Elizabeth Park neighborhood reference in the neighborhood of close geographic proximity. Could be in, in effect, they're really about the same, although that's right, the, the B uh, clearly says, you know, that those who served on the committee before would be asked to continue. And could you refresh my memory? I can't, re I didn't, don't have a list. I'm not sure I ever had a list of who was on the committee currently. Yeah, Michael Aside Moles. from the elected officials. Okay, yes. yeah, the, well, the councilors were Michael Moles and Carol Fritz. Yes. The school board members were Ann Belden and Kevin Sweeney. Yes. Wendy Seltzer is a citizen member and is chairman of the committee. Uh, Andy Strout was appointed by the school board to serve on the committee. Uh, Graham Smith and Michael Ott were both designated to serve on the committee, and Judy Rowe was designated to serve on the committee. Okay. And do we, do we know if any of those people or all of them are interested or willing to continue serving? I felt it would be presumptuous of me to ask them without council direction. Okay. 
first we have to decide what we're going to do. Okay. But I, I, I think I, my I just, sense was that I appreciate we're the answer. explanation because it wasn't clear to me from yeah. reading this what the difference was other than some very minor sure. minor Mar wording. Marianne? I don't know whether now is the appropriate time to ask another question because the motion Yeah, we need a second. Second it. So yeah. I will second it for Thank the purposes you. Okay. of so let's further discussion and now I have a question. Fine. And and that question is um, if we were to go with B, is there someone currently on the committee who lives in Elizabeth Park? There is no one who lives, who is currently on the committee who lives in Elizabeth Park. There is a person who lives in close proximity to Hannaford Field. Who is that? Andy Strobe. Who's also a school employee and an athletic coach. He's involved, yeah. He's, he's, involved in he's very work. involved in a way that is not necessarily from a neighborhood right. framework? Perspective, yeah. Perspective. Probably from more of a school perspective. So, but who knows? I mean, that's up I to guess me. my only concern with B, I'm sort of indifferent between A and B, except that I don't think that B gives us the neighborhood perspective that I think we ought to have on this committee. Um, it's um, going to be one of the bigger gathering areas in town, uh, that neighborhood backs right up to it. And, um, and I, I have the greatest respect for Andy Strout, but he is going to come at this from a different perspective than someone who lives in Elizabeth Park. And that's my only concern with option David? B. Just so we're completely clear on where this came from, B came from me. <laughs> and you know, I received what the the town manager sent out and I read it and I made some suggestions for changes and I emailed it back to him. Um, the reference to close proximity, of course, came from the, the, the manager's original suggested email. It doesn't matter to me whether it's somebody from Elizabeth Park, that's fine. Um, it, my only change that I was really intending to make was it just seemed to me that it made sense just sort of procedurally to have the original mm -hmm. committee continue on to completion rather than have one committee that we say, okay, you're done, now we're going to start and name an entirely new committee to pick up now and finish. Right. That, was, that was my only thought process on it. Um, I, I'm also somewhat indifferent to it. It doesn't matter to me. I don't think this is something that really merits a whole lot of discussion by the council. Yeah. But just so you know what my thinking was, it was just the thought that it seemed to make sense to have one committee continue on from start to finish, change the name, of it, the name of it now that we have an official name for the field. And I'm perfectly okay if um, Councillor Lynch thinks it's appropriate. And I don't think it's inappropriate at all to designate that there be a representative from mm -hmm. the Elizabeth Park neighborhood. And, and I'm perfectly okay with the current committee continuing on, except that I do think well, as we, we talk have, about uh, seating for 300 or 600, I've heard sure. 1,200 that we need to have neighborhood input. Well, why don't we, why don't we amend it? As, do you, would you like to amend that, Marion? Well, um, I, I made the motion. I'm certainly happy to amend it. Um, I say one thing Sarah, please. Of I'm sorry. It seems like this process has generated an enormous amount of passion in the community. I suspect there are a few people who would love to either be on this committee or weigh in or have input or something. Is there any medium for that or is there a is there a number limitation or will they have public hearings it, it, I, you know. well you've got to realize it's also it, it is a public committee so anybody can come and and listen and you know chime in as appropriate it's so it's not as though people are closed shut out of this and it's, all they do is present to the school board essentially. Yeah, it, but you have so to it's have, not a huge thing i think what people what i sensed from our meeting a few weeks ago was that people felt many people felt that the committee ended too abruptly mm -hmm. and there wasn't enough follow through to to completion and that's why we are you know looking at this today so i think there'll be plenty of opportunity for input i mean that's my sense of it i don't yeah i'm now that I understand between the two, I'm reasonably indifferent between the two of them, except I do like having an Elizabeth Park resident be on the committee uh, to weigh in. Mm -hmm. I think there is somewhat of a difference. I'm, I'm sympathetic to Councillor Lennon's 
comment because I think there is somewhat of a difference from someone being on the committee, a voting member of the committee, mm -hmm. and providing input, and then some, you know, the meetings are open to the public, but the public is not, I'm sure the committee will listen to anything that anybody says, but the, mm -hmm. the public, when it's sitting over the side, does not participate in the discussion True. in the same way that a full-fledged member of the committee does, and is not a voting member, obviously. Right. Um, I happen to like the wording of A better. I think it's simpler, but we can amend B a little bit. But I'm, I'm just a little concerned that if, and I think it's perfectly fine to continue all the committee members that want to continue. Um, but we're going to, if none of them live in the Elizabeth Park neighborhood, we're going to have to add a, a, a number, a person, to get, unless we kick off one of them, and I don't think that's appropriate, because I don't think any of the counselors or the school board members that might be appointed live in that neighborhood. So we're going to have to add somebody if we want to. That's yeah. true. I, I, yeah, I see where you're coming from. That and makes if we add sense. one person, yeah. it, we I should I can, have an, an uneven number. You want to add to that? I think I can offer the resignation of one member. Okay. I have to face her tonight, but no, no <laughs> she, she, she's offered it. Okay. All right. So, so if need be, we have a, we have a position. If, I mean, if there isn't someone who lives there. Yeah. Might. I just wanted to state other, one other point, in particular as it relates to the, the, the existing turf field committee compared to this one. If you look at the, the charge to the original committee, it was everything was present that plan to the school board and town council for approval, mm -hmm. acceptable to the Cape Elizabeth School Board and town council. Uh, the naming of the field, come to the town council. Uh, this recommendation, which survived in my draft and the two subsequent drafts, all provide that any recommendation from this committee goes first to the school board. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it goes only if the school board approves it, is it forwarded to the town council for further approval. Mm -hmm. One of the real challenges with the earlier committee was who came first, the school mm -hmm. board and the council. And that, you know, when I, when I look at the passion of some of the issues and, and you know, that, that was a challenge was there were some noses out of joint, mm -hmm. to be blunt about it, uh, if it went to the council first or if it went to the school board first. In this case, it spells it right out. It goes to the school board first. I like that. I think that I think makes a lot good. of sense. Marianne. Or anybody else? Uh, okay. Do yes. we have an amendment then? To we have an amended. Um, um, a resident. Except, uh, yeah. Of Elizabeth Park. That's it's for, for uh, Plan B, amended to include a resident of Elizabeth Park. And so that amendment needs to be seconded? Second. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. I didn't second the first one. Okay. Well, I seconded the first one, she, she so did. I'll second the amendment. Okay. okay, there you go. So you make an okay. amendment that so Elizabeth Park. <laughs> That's fine. I thought they just amended their own motion. I thought they did too. Okay. But, but I was did, fine with that. Did, just want did to you guys sure. just do that? You can do that. Um, did you do that, David? I heard the second, but I did. show didn't. that I made a motion to amend my own motion okay. <laughs> to have That's fine, option yeah. B say that one of the citizen members shall be a resident of the Elizabeth Park neighborhood. Okay, so we're all on board. All in favor of the motion as amended or as stated. Okay, very good. Okay, we will move on to item number 92, Churfield Committee. Recommend this item be tabled since the first action negates the need to do this. Second. Okay, do we have a motion? Uh, Sarah, you'd like to make a motion to table this? Yes. And do we have a second on that? A second. Okay, Jim, all in favor? Okay, good. It's, it's done. <laughs> Item number 93, Trout Brook Watershed Management Plan. Yeah, you have a memo before you uh, from the planning board indicating that they had a, a very cooperative uh, meeting uh, discussing mutual interests with with the South Portland Planning Board, and one of the issues of concern is the, uh, the condition of the Trout Brook watershed. And uh, it's recently been designated by the state of Maine as an urban impaired watershed, and uh, it's been suggested that there be a local watershed management plan, that the boards would collaboratively agree on that, and uh, there's a resolution that the board has adopted, and the, the action proposed to the council is that you authorize the staff and the planning board to work collaboratively with the city of South Poland on a management plan for the truck work watershed. Any management plan, of course, would come back to the town council. 
respective councils. Ann. I move that we authorize staff to work collaboratively with South Portland on a management plan for the Trout Brook watershed. Okay, do we have a second on the motion? Second. Sarah? Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Okay, done. Okay, we'll move on to item number 94, construction code amendments. Jim, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as charged by the Town Council, the Ordinance Committee met on May 18th, uh, Friday, with Code Enforcement Officer Bruce Smith and Fire Chief uh, Phil McGulrick to review uh, proposed amendments to the Town's Building Construction and Fire Prevention Codes. Uh, when revising existing code, or when implementing new code, we're now legally required by the State of Maine to adopt the 2003 International Residential Code and the 2003 International Building Code is put forth by the International Code Council. Uh, municipalities are allowed to insert rules and guidelines that address uh, spe specific local needs, but otherwise the intent here is to have uh, all towns eventually operating under this big umbrella uh, code. I think that's uh, probably a wise move. I think that it's important to note that outside of housekeeping, only one of the proposed changes to the building code uh, represents departure from what currently exists. And that is uh, with regard to the net size of first floor egress windows. Our current uh, town code lists a minimum uh, free opening of 5.0 square feet. The state has adopted the National Fire Prevention uh, Association, Fire Protection Association code of 5.7% square, uh, square foot minimum opening. So we are recommending that the Cape Elizabeth comply with the state rules here. Uh, all the other proposed changes are to insert our current uh, town information into the state rule and international code templates. Um, where specific references to the international code documents are advisable, then we're proposing that they be inserted. A similar situation uh, was with our fire pr protection code, fire prevention code. Uh, the ordinance committee is recommending that the local code be brought into line with the 2003 international uh, fire code as published in the International Code Council. Again, the intent here is to insert uh, Cape Elizabeth information into the uh, state approved template. This keeps our town in compliance with state law. This is not to, uh, to imply that we haven't been in compliance or that we've been in violation because what the state has said that is whenever you, you are amending code or inserting code, you must adopt this code. Uh, there were no substantive changes made to our existing fire prevention code other than to do away with gender specific language. For example, there was reference to uh, workman's compensation, it's now workers' compensation. There were several references to firemen, uh, they're now firefighters, uh, that type of thing. Uh, in addition to the building and fire codes, it was noted by Code Enforcement Officer Smith that parts of our sewer code were outdated and needed work as well. Um, while the Ordinance Committee uh, hadn't been formally charged by the Town Council to consider sewer code uh, per se, we did take the opportunity at our May 18th meeting to consider a change that Bruce was proposing. And uh, as with the building cons construction and fire prevention codes, it seemed advisable to update our sewer code to make sure that it's in compliance with main, main rule. Um, what he proposed uh, is deleting the current text of Article 2 of our sewer code. Uh, which was outdated and replacing this deleted text with reference to appropriate international code. <clears throat> As was uh, pointed out by Manager McGovern in our packets in a memo, uh, Article 3 of the sewer code is, is now also considered to be superfluous. Uh, we're also recommending that it be deleted in its entirety. The proposed change to Article 2 was voted at our meeting. The pros proposed deletion of Article 3 received straw support in an informal canvas uh, after that meeting. Um, there may be some procedural concern here, but I, I don't think it's really too valid for three reasons. Number one, none of the changes that we're proposing are substantive. They're all just changing the documents to, to comply with state uh, law. Number two, the town council is not being asked to act on these proposals tonight. Um, and number three, the council is, is proposing that the, that the proposals be referred to a uh, uh, public hearing. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for the public to uh, have input here. So in order to put something on the table for discussion and referencing items number 90, 
94, 95, and number 96 on the current meeting agenda. Uh, I would move that the changes recommended by the Ordinance Committee to the Building Construction Code, Fire Prevention Code, and the sewer ordinances, as they appear in tonight's meeting packet, be sent to public hearing on Monday, July 9th, and that following public hearing, they be considered for adoption. Do we have a second? Second. second. Yeah. Okay. Any, for, any discussion? I think Jim's filled us in pretty well. All in favor? Okay. Great. Okay. Let's move on to item number 97, carry forward balances. Yeah, each year in, e in either June or July, usually June, I give you a list of balances that are proposed to be carried forward. Uh, if you look at these literally, these account numbers, and you look at the column that's with the numbers, uh, they may not agree on the appropriation control. That's for a number of reasons. Uh, in a couple of instances, it's, it's been a couple of separate accounts have been combined into one account. For example, the comprehensive plan. It's monies in the comprehensive plan account, which is the one listed also in a planning consultant account. Uh, you know, I'd be happy to answer any question. There is one new item here, and that's the emergency generator for the town hall at $35,000. We could have used that this morning uh, when we were out for about an hour and 15 minutes. We're finding uh, more and more that we seem to be losing power. So this would enable a generator to totally supply the building. Uh, so it's proposed to carry that forward. Uh, in addition, uh, in the, both the roadway improvements and shore road overlay account, uh, those amounts have been bumped up slightly to reflect the, the, the main Department of Transportation has indicated uh, since these amounts were appropriated, there was a 35% inflationary rate in the first year and a 10% the second year. And this would enable us to pave uh, Spurwink Avenue from the end of the state project at Deer Run Road to Perputic uh, Driveway, as well as Shore Road mm -hmm. from the town center to Fort Williams, along with some shoulder improvements as well uh, on Shore Road. When I say shoulder improvements, reclaiming the traditional shoulder that's been there through some minor trimming, as well as some, uh, uh, the, the shoulders built up over the years with all the sand and everything else that gets pushed aside. And we want to go in and scoop that back out so that it's a good walkable surface again. Excellent. Okay. Do we have a motion to um, accept the carry forward balances? Anybody? David? I move that um, we accept the, um, what are we accepting? Are we, are we calling them carry forward balances? Uh, accept the carry forward balances to be continued into FY 2008. Um, as set forth under item number 98 of our agenda. 97. Seven. 97, sorry. Oh, I was looking at the urine great. transfers. Hey, do we have a second, Jim? A second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, let's move on to item number 98, year end transfers. I think these are fairly self-explanatory there. Right, put them right on the agenda document. We overspent our legal and audit account uh, because of the cost of fact finding for the police collective bargaining agreement. Our insurance premium came in higher than anticipated. Our debt service was overspent by $245. And the local welfare account or general assistance, we uh, had a, a very uh, a difficult year in terms of the numbers of applicants that we dealt with and the issues that they were dealing with, uh, resulting in that state mandated program of needing to spend $15,314 uh, thus far based on the, uh, the guidelines that the council adopts each year from the MMA recommended guidelines on how we deal with applications when they come in. So I would ask that you uh, authorize uh, these revised appropriations as presented. And I, I, and I did underline there and do want to underline and emphasize the entire budget is well within the budget. Uh, <coughs> We have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Let's move on to, well, this is, okay, item 90, 99, yes. Item 99. 99, appointments committee recommendation. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to report 
on what the Appointments Committee has been doing. We had a number of interviews that we did before the comprehensive plan workshop that we had last week. Uh, we saw a goodly number of excellent candidates. I'm always pleased to report that we have great people who are applying for um, voluntary positions, volunteer positions to serve on our boards and commissions. And I would encourage anyone who was not nominated and confirmed tonight to please reapply because we just didn't have enough slots on some of the boards to fill. We had more excellent candidates than we had slots open, but we will be having more slots open at the end of this year in December, and I encourage those same people to reapply if, they, if we were unable to accommodate them um, this evening. So I would like to uh, move, the Appointments Committee is recommending, and I would like to move uh, the Council's approval of the following people uh, to fill empty slots. For the Arts Commission, Janesta Berry to fill an unexpired term which will expire December 31st, 2008. And also Linda Brary, uh, a term to uh, end year-end 2009. And Wilt Wendy Seltzer, term to expire 12-31-09. For the Conservation Commission, John Planensek, uh, for an unexpired term, which will expire 12-31-2008. For the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, William Nickerson, for an unexpired term, which will end 12-31-08. For Personnel Appeals Board, Carol Fritz, um, to fill an unexpired term, which will expire at year-end 2008. And for the Spurwink Meeting House Preservation Committee, we have six people. This is not a standing committee of uh, the town, but it is basically an 18 month mm -hmm. or so commitment. Um, the people we are recommending for that include Jay Cox, Carol Fritz, Julie Keene, William Marshall, Darren McClellan, and William Wadman. And I would note that Carol Fritz and Darren McClellan are continuing on. They asked to continue on. They were on the first committee. Um, I would also say that we still have one more empty slot for the Spurwink Meeting House Preservation Committee. We would hope, I, I'm sending a plea out there through the press and through the um, website and through the uh, cable TV station, we are looking for another person we would hope to have with historic preservation expertise or experience of some sort or someone from the Spurwink Meeting House neighborhood. So we have one more slot, so I'm really putting it out there. I hope somebody will see this and, um, and apply, um, because we would like to see that sort of representation and expertise uh, and uh, local knowledge on that board. Um, and also there's one other note that I would like to make before we vote, and one of our candidates is uh, an election worker. I had asked the assistant manager about this to check the rules. So we did not perceive it, we, the, the uh, appointments committee, did not perceive that there was any sort of um, conflict here. Uh, one of the person serves as a town election warden. It is not a full-time job. We don't see any conflict with that. And I would, I, I see the manager nodding, so I perceive that you do not see that as a conflict. What what, what Ann is referring to, there's a, there's a council policy for the appointments to standing, standing boards and commissions. Yes. And what that reads is that no, uh, no employee of the town may be appointed to a, to a board or commission. Uh, I drafted some, Ann had asked through Deb yes. for some language to be drafted uh, that the council could consider amending that. I actually drafted it this afternoon. I sent it to, to Deborah Lane for her review, and I imagine she would be sharing that or something else with you tomorrow. So we can consider that at another in, in time July. if we have to amend it. But we didn't see any conflict. But, right. but in, in the draft policy would uh, liberalize that policy. Okay. Okay. So I heartily recommend these people. I would like to thank everyone who volunteered, as well as my fe fellow members of the Appointments Committee, David Backer and Mary Ann Lynch. Okay. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second it. Okay. Any
Discussion? All in favor? Okay, great. Okay, we'll move on to item number 100, use of community center lower level. You, you have a, actually an email that Sue Weatherby sent me. She, she sent to me, uh, the director of community service. She had spoken about this. And I was just a little bit nervous because these things start very innocently. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know, then you discover that you need to do something to the area longer term because there's board need. But I think she lays out a, a good case for using this building. In fact, I spoke to the fitness center manager about it last Friday, who's very excited about having additional programs in this area. It passes all the, the fire code issues and, uh, you know, it would be relative, there's just one wall that needs to go in and it would be relatively inexpensive to do. It would have to come out of the existing budgets and uh, I'd recommend that we more fully utilize this space by allowing the programming to begin on the lower level of the community center. Ann? I have a question for the, ma for the manager, if, okay. if I might. Um, what's in that space now? I mean, I'm just wondering, there must be something there, and I'm just wondering where that something is going. Photocopy. The, the easy answer to your question is, what's in there now is that it's mostly empty. Oh, but, okay. however, that's the easy answer because that's because the school has used most of their paper supplies uh, since the oh. end of the school year. So in the fall, there tends to be a lot more paper uh, that belongs to the school so department. Has the, my second question would be, is, is the school administration aware of this potential change so, just so they don't come back in the fall and discover yeah. they have Sue to has put dis their paper? Sue has discussed it with them and we plan to work with them to try to accommodate the paper storage issue. And we're evolving into a paperless society, too. Well, of course. Yeah. All the computers we have, right? <laughs> Marianne. Thank you. I, I just have a question. I, it sounds great. Um, many school groups use that space for the cookie dough sale, the mum sale, the pies, any number of things. They have all of this stuff unloaded. And my question is, will those groups be able to use some other space, for instance, the garage back here? Yeah. I don't want to specifically commit to any space, but we would try to work with those groups. I'm looking for a commitment from you. No, you asked specifically would we send them to the building out back. Okay. My preference would be that Sue Weatherby accommodate them within the community center. Okay, so we'd that make a commitment we, though. To, to, we'd, we'd make a commitment to, to address that issue, but I, but I don't want to, I prefer not to address it out back because it's, the space is unheated and really isn't adequate for most of those. And I don't, I obviously don't want to dictate what space, but that has been worth thousands of dollars to the various school groups that mm -hmm. the booster, not boosters, the par parent associations. So I just want to make sure that they're not left high and dry. Point noted. Okay. I'll be watching. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a uh, motion to. Um, so moved. Yes. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Item number 101, acceptance of lease deeds from the heirs of Dorothy Scott. Yeah, the, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The council is aware that there's land behind Sherwood Forest. It's about 18 acres. Uh, as you look at the, the map over there from the far distance, you see the big pink blot or violet, I guess it would be, mm -hmm. that's Fort Williams Park. Uh, right across from that, you have the Sherwood Forest neighborhood, and then be, just beyond that, you have a white space, but right below that, you have the Stonegate open space, and then below that, you have the Land Trust open space. What this would do is uh, acquire fuller interest in the 18 acres immediately in back of Loxley Road, and the Land Trust has also been speaking to individuals over in the Rockwall Lane area uh, to acquire easements that would therefore then connect the Greenbelt area uh, fully from the whole Oakhurst neighborhood uh, connecting, you know, up through the Robinson Woods land and then eventually in keeping with the, the longer term <coughs> Greenbelt plan, the hope is all the way to the town center. Uh, but this is the key part that really ties the, the major neighborhood in the northern end uh, to that whole Greenbelt connection. You know, it's, it's a very strange situation. The council saw earlier the, the, the title work uh, and, you know, the, the, the real issue and Tom Leahy, the town attorney, and I have struggled with it, you know, what's a 114th interest 
you know, really do for us? Do we need two fourteenths? Do we need three fourteenths? Mm -hmm. the, the the major pieces uh, we've been corresponding with the Janet Jordan Adaton or edition. We're not too sure of the, the name, or maybe Thomas now at this point. And you know, she had responded a few years ago. She was willing to donate her three sevenths interest. We sent her a couple letters. We didn't get a response to both an address in Florida, I believe it was, as well as Bar Harbor. And somehow I, I got I got an email from Tom Friday, late in the day that her obituary was in the Bangor Daily News in January. I don't know if they did it, how they discovered that, but uh, so he's he's written a letter to uh, the attorney who represented her late husband's estate, thinking even though it hasn't been probated yet, that it might be her estate as well. Anyway, so the you know the the desire has been first of all to perfect our title of the one fourteenth. And this piece does that, because this is the one we had foreclosed on, on the tax lien uh, for this particular one. But also then to, to try to obtain all of those interests that don't reach a dead end. And some of them do reach a dead end. The heirs have, have, have uh, you know, are no longer known, or it was owned by a corporation that no longer exists. Uh, the, uh, you know, we, we're progressing on it. There's one party. Uh, the Rosella Lovett, who you probably wrote about her, wonderful woman in uh, South Portland, was involved with historic uh, uh, issues in, for the city of South Portland for a long, long time. She was one of the heirs. Uh, she's represented by Merton Henry, a very prominent attorney. Most everyone knows uh, Mr. Henry. Uh, he said he's willing to donate her portion, but he needs to make sure that he honors his fiduciary responsibility to the estate, mm -hmm. that if we offer money to anyone, we, he needs to get an equal share for the estate of uh, Rosella Lovett. Uh, some of these ownership pieces, like one, one twenty, one of one, one twenty, you know, less than one percent of the land, one, mm -hmm. one twenty second. I don't know why I have trouble saying that. Uh, you know, my guess is we're going to offer it to some of these people, and they won't want to, you know, if that's the council willing, they're not going to want to accept any money because they get into capital gains issues, even though in, in tax concerns and. They might just be willing to donate their interests. Uh, so anyway, what, I, what the recommendation here is in the agenda is that we continue to work with all these parties that you authorize uh, me or the town attorney, we're working on it, he's doing most of the work on it, uh, to offer them up to their proportionate share of the assessed value. And, you know, and there is a legitimate issue. Do we, once you have a one, you know, one of the councilors uh, was getting ready to speak, Marianne said, mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting, you know, what do we get when we get to, you know, more than seven fourteenths of the property? And, you know, in my view, we, we get, you know, the, more of a, a moral right. Are you going to let me make my motion? Yeah. Or are you going to tell the council what I'm going to say? I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah. Thank right. you. Marianne. I just want to make a motion, and the motion would be, that we accept the release deeds from the heirs of Dorothy Scott. I think we should break this up analytically into two pieces. Okay. Do we have That's a second? My first. Second. second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Now, my Go second ahead. motion would be since we're going into executive session later to discuss the acquisition <clears throat> of property. I think we should go into executive session to discuss the pros and cons and benefits of the acquisition of this property as well. Could I ask a question? And would it be the, your intent that there would be a vote after the executive there, there session? There could be a vote. Okay. Hmm. Just if I might, Mr. Chairman, Please. the fi final that. page of the agenda indicates what the motion content would need to be uh, to go into executive session and the, and the permitted deliberation. And any motion to go into executive session on items 101 and 102 would need to say that it's in accordance with one MRSA uh, chapter, I guess that's just chapter. Is that I'll amend my motion. 405 paragraph 6C. Okay, before, before this happens, I will say that um, just for the public, we, we will not be coming back out here after executive session, and there's no real reason to, right? Unless you guys, do we need to? Yeah, well, we don't need to come back here, but anyone, we'll check the room and invite anyone into the that's room. That's right, we, we will check. We can vote up there if we're going to vote. That's but, what I'm saying. But 
the public is invited. It will be open to the public for any vote, absolutely. So what we will be, oh, we could even stay here for that matter, I guess. No, because no, there might be we, public waiting. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll second Councilor Lynch's motion. That's the second motion she made. Okay, any discussion? So the motion was to take 101 and 102. No, just no, 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 just the second part that the we, second piece? we adopted. We already had a motion to accept okay. the um, interest of the heirs of Dorothy Scott. And so my motion okay. is to discuss further acquisition okay. of that property in executive session okay. or acquisition of the 13 14ths remaining interest. Okay, very good. And, and that was you what I, that. What okay. I uh, seconded. Okay, any discussion on that motion? That would be 101B. That's right, it just became 101B. Yes. That's fine. Okay, uh, all in favor? Very good. All right, so now we will move on to item number 102. Do we have a motion? Would someone like to make a motion to, go, to uh, proposed executive session? Did you, uh, did you want to explain the item first? Uh, I'll make a motion. Yeah, the, uh, the manager has um, asked that we consider um, the availability of um, purchasing property that abuts um, the Thomas Memorial Library, and in particular that's uh, property at 7 Holman Road. So I would move that we enter executive session in accordance with 1 MRSA section 405 paragraph 6C. Okay, and in that executive session, we're gonna discuss this item as well as the um, item 101. 101B, right? Yeah, and then following that, it's proposed to have a workshop too, just to go over the goals, just as a reminder. Right, yeah, following our, our uh, adjournment this evening, we're gonna have a workshop to um, review the council goals and where we are today, you know, how much progress we've made and what we're going to do moving forward. Okay, I so. second Councilor, Mo Councilor Lynch's motion. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Okay, we will uh, meet in that, Thomas. We will not be back on television. No, we will not. So what about the citizens' discussion? We, don't we should do that, what? citizens' discussion. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's right. Before we, before we go forward, uh, one more time, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Would anybody like to come up and mention anything not on the agenda? So we have a recent graduate of West Point. We do. We have my son, Alexander McKinney, who is a now a second lieutenant, Alexander McKinney, and my lovely wife, Betsy. He wanted to come up down and see what this council thing was all about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my only question is, how do you know that that's Alexander and not Aaron? <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> Lots of experience. <laughs> Betsy, to get out of here, you need to spell desiccate. He <laughs> <laughs> on the front page of the century, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. With his brother and, and, All right. and, One, two, and his lucky three. dad. <laughs> All right, we'll move into the uh, Tom Jordan room. <laughs>